There it is! 2000! A milestone moment for a Pittsburgh icon back home. Andrew McCutcheon is a legend for the Pittsburgh Pirates, which says a lot for a team that's been around seven years longer than ballpoint pens. A guy who very well could have passed up on baseball entirely to be a wide receiver at the University of Miami, yet he stayed the course with baseball to become one of the most talented, well-liked, charitable, and memorable players of his generation. To the point where I'm going to sit here and advocate for him to be a Hall of Famer before his career even ends. He's not a guy you typically see Hall of Fame buzz for, but trust me when I say there is a real argument to be made even if none of his statistics in a vacuum scream Hall of Fame lock. So why should Andrew McCutcheon be a Hall of Famer? Well, for starters, because he's really good at baseball. The pitch. High fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Go! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Andrew McCutcheon oh, God! has won it! McCutcheon is the 17th best offensive center fielder of all time by war. War takes a player's overall value, in this specific case just their offensive value, and quantifies it down to one number compared to the competition around them. There are 494 primary center fielders with a positive offensive war in MLB history, and McCutcheon's is the 17th highest of all of them. Better than Andrew Jones, Kirby Puckett, Andre Dawson, and even friend of the brand Ellis Burks. All of whom might have seemed like bigger offensive threats in their primes than Kutch. Andrew's first home run in 2024 will be the 300th of his career. He's got 2,000 hits already, he has 5 seasons in his career with over 20 stolen bases, and just last year at age 36 he walked at a rate higher than 99% of all big leaguers. His eye at the plate is still elite, even today. You probably had no idea that he's still a top tier on base plus speed guy, which even if he's a designated hitter today, should speak volumes about his talent and longevity. By wins above replacement at the position, Kutch is currently 29th all time. In terms of war across his 7 best seasons, he's 23rd. But his 5 year peak was undoubtedly the highest point of his career. I mean, it's literally his peak after all. From 2011 to 2015, he made an all-star team every year, won four Silver Slugger awards, a Gold Glove award, maintained a batting average over 300 with on-base and slugging percentages really good across this span, was the best offensive player in the National League by war for three straight seasons, and won an MVP award. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, as the true face of their franchise, his emergence helped snap the streak of over 20 straight losing seasons to lead the Pirates back to the playoffs. No, not these Pirates. In fact, being their leader for three straight postseason appearances, a streak the Pirates hadn't started since the year the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air first aired. Which, by the way, is a metric I once told a big league ball player to their face when describing how long their career lasted. I also stole using the Fresh Prince of Bel Air as a unit of time measurement from iCarly. Arg. Arg. That's a pirate word. Kutch's rate stats have always been an interesting batch. While his defense has never been amazing, over the course of his career, he's maintained an all-star caliber offensive production rate compared to his peers. As recently as 2022, he was faster than 90% of big leaguers on the bases. And of course, he's always carried great plate discipline stats. It's very rare in the grand scheme of things to see pitchers make him beat himself, which sometimes is all you can ask for in a hitter. Assuming he maintains minimally decent production this and even next year, he'll crack 50 lifetime wins above replacement for his career. Now, 50 war far from guarantees you a plaque in the Hall of Fame, but he'll emerge into the tier of center fielders that have at least gotten true consideration for it, if not start to get recognized for their careers. I think once that day comes where he locks in at that nice round number of 50, his numbers will feel a lot more whole and complete. Let's also say that he plays two more healthy seasons in his career. Let's assume those seasons are decent, then he retires. I'd guess he'll clock out with about 325 career home runs and a little over 2200 hits. 
That'd be more or less Joe DiMaggio's hit total with George Brett's home run total. There will be some narrative ball clubs that he'll be a part of at that point, if he's not already there. These help contextualize just how good and well-rounded his offensive game was. Kutch already has six seasons in his career of 20 home runs, 10 stolen bases, and 30 doubles. Only six players in MLB history have had more. He is one home run away from becoming one of just 19 in MLB history with 300 homers, 200 stolen bases, and 2,000 hits. All of the many, many players in MLB history, he'd just be the 19th. And if he retires with over 50 war, he would become the 17th player ever with 50 war, 300 home runs, and 200 stolen bases. The other 16 are either already in the Hall of Fame, not in because of various scandals or controversies, Barry Bonds' dad, or Mike Trout. Again, I know some of these unlock at 50 war, so to speak, but think about the caliber of players Andrew McCutcheon has rubbed shoulders with in terms of his accomplishments. And he's got time to do even more before he retires. While on the subject of his retirement, Kutch is a pirate through and through. You know, when he's not on puppy dog pals. Name's Wagga Ford P. Kutchamuch, but you can call me Kutch. He came up with the Pirates in 2009, he said he wants to finish his career as a pirate. As the face of the team this millennium, he's seen it all there. Good, bad, great, ugly. He's left the team and come back. Universally celebrated upon his return to the city. This is a guy who cried for two days when the Pirates traded him away. When it got kinda ugly towards the end of his first Pirates tenure. Jeff Passan reported that the Pirates were like, actively, aggressively shopping him while he was still pretty good and the team wasn't that far removed from contention. Which, full disclosure, I hate Jeff Passan because he's a little weasel who called me short in Nashville. But even if you search up that giant jerk's paper trail of tweets about Andrew McCutcheon, there are so many good and positive things about him out there for everyone to see. He was known early in his career for his dreadlocks, so he cut them before the 2015 season to auction them off for charity. That same year, he won MLB's Roberto Clemente Award, named for another Pirates legend which tries to honor the best humanitarian in baseball baseball every year. It's the ultimate off-the-field award in baseball. I mean, one of his managers with the Pirates even said he'd let him date his daughter. Is there such thing as a bigger vouch than that? What more does he have to do, let him take a spot in the Fortnite squad? But unfortunately, Kutch is taken. He proposed to his wife on The Ellen Show, which, minus the DJ Khaled appearance, is about the only good thing that ever happened on that show. What'd you do? Now, how'd you, how'd you actually do it on Ellen? Like um... I have to watch. I blacked out. And he made waves by clapping back at a hater on Twitter one time who unsuccessfully tried to roast him, saying he was watching playoff baseball from his couch, by clearing up that he was, in fact, watching it in his comfortable bed with his hot wife. <laughs> He and his wife held a week's worth of charity events in Pittsburgh in 2019 and together made a large donation to a Pittsburgh food supply in 2020. These happened while he wasn't even a Pirates player anymore. He did, however, proudly wear his Pirates hat even after they gave up on him in 2018. I wore it a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I wore it even when I went on the yeah. Pirates. I'm gonna just put that out there. The point should very easily be, Andrew McCutcheon is a pretty great guy. He was a Philly at the time of those two Pittsburgh charity events I just mentioned, showing off how good of a guy he was to a different Pennsylvania market. He's such a fun and easy person to root for, let alone player. He takes incredibly iconic pictures, he gives you fun and wholesome mic'd up moments. Cleats clean, cleats clean everything, I ain't do nothing. I don't want a mic. He searches for every last opportunity to have fun on the field, even playing rock, paper, scissors with the Phillies' third base coach whenever he'd score on a home run. And you have to love that. You only get so many players of his caliber who just seem like they're having fun at all times. So let's circle back to the Hall of Fame. I'm gonna get on a bit of a soapbox here if you don't mind about how Hall of Fame voting has tended to work. Voters are instructed to consider a player's character when picking them for the Hall of Fame. They call it the character clause. 
and it's normally ever been enforced for bad character. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens aren't in the Hall of Fame because of steroid connections and shaky legal past. Before them, it was Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa facing that. A-Rod's got the same problem today. Gary Sheffield isn't in just for being vaguely associated with steroids. Carlos Beltran has been having to wait because of his ties to the Astros' sign-stealing scandal. Jeff Kent and Kurt Schilling didn't get in because the writers thought they were just openly abrasive jerks. And Omar Vizquel's case is, deservedly, very dead. After he was once looking like a guy who was on his way in until he abused an autistic bat boy while he was a minor league manager. The point is, being a bad person while having Hall of Fame type on-field credentials has been enough to keep you out. But it has only ever worked like that. I think the pendulum needs to swing to the other side. If we're going to use character as a reason to keep someone out of the Hall of Fame, we should wield it as a force for good for those who deserve it. I can't think of a better fit than Andrew McCutcheon to start with, because only thinking about it from the bad perspective is hypocritical, stupid, doesn't make any sense, I, it, it boggles my mind, I can't even form sentences right now. Think of it like this. Say Andrew McCutcheon's numbers are just short of being a lock to get in. With a small little boost given to him for being such a universally liked guy with a true affiliation to one team with justifiable enough stats for his position, you shouldn't lose sleep if Kutch gets a plaque. In fact, you should love it. It's incredibly stupid and hypocritical to only use character against guys. If we're gonna talk such a big game about character, Need to see it on the other side too. You gotta reward the players who actually did their part and were good people. It's like how your honor mattered for the ending of Red Dead Redemption 2. But not give a small boost to guys on that borderline threshold that are just overwhelmingly good and well-liked people. Not saying this person should have been in, but for this same logic, Dale Murphy should have gotten more consideration back in the day. In fact, I'm comfortable saying Kutch is the best candidate on the board to wield the character clause for as a positive force in history. Among the borderline guys, he's the first one who should get that real boost. If you're the kind of fan who thinks his numbers will fall just a tiny bit short of our arbitrary Hall of Fame statistics, I'm going to strongly ask you to think about it on a bigger scale than that. If nothing else, Kutch was one of the faces of his generation. For five years, he was the best player in the National League. Doing so on one of baseball's oldest teams, he's within striking distance of becoming a top 10 player by war in Pirates history. Which, if that doesn't sound cool to you for some reason, you gotta remember that the Pirates are like, so old. Oh yeah, remember, Kutch isn't done yet. He's re-upped with the Pirates for this upcoming season, and he has said he plans to play at least two more seasons and retire a Pittsburgh Pirate. He's got time for even more fun, even more memories, and maybe, just maybe, another crack at taking the Pirates back to the playoffs. Cementing himself further as an undeniable legend on one of baseball's longest lasting teams. That's generally a pretty good recipe for Hall of Fame consideration. Be good for a long time, pick up some accolades, and do it on a team with some history being associated with that team for as long as possible, too. Throw in that he's about as likable as likable can be, and this is a no-brainer for me. I feel a ton of honor here advocating for the guy. Whether or not it actually comes to fruition, Kutch embodies everything baseball and the Hall of Fame are about, and he should go down in history as such. Wishing the best to Andrew McCutcheon in the final chapters of his career. Okay, fine. You win, all right? I'll bring it up. McCutcheon tweeted out this morning just the word furry. He tweets about furries a lot. For many, many years now. Andrew McCutcheon is also at the intersection of baseball and anthropomorphic animal culture. Happy now? Whatever. Hey, wait, what's your fursona? 